Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Friday, November 21. Over 100 persons from the parishes of St. Catherine, Clarendon, St. Elizabeth and Manchester are now registered landowners, having received their titles Thursday. The process was facilitated by a Memorandum of Understanding signed recently between the Land Ministry and the Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ. It facilitates the provision of grant funding valued at over 90 million Jamaican dollars to assist landowners who are desirous of completing payments owed to LAMP for titling services but are unable to do so at this time. Over three years, I'm trying to get my title. And I'm so happy today that I have it and my children in Canada are very, very happy. They are jumping now for joy because mom is finally okay. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller reminded the new land title recipients of government's commitment to ensuring that as many Jamaicans as possible become landowners. We need to continue to ensure that our people will be able to hold up their titles and proudly declare, I own a piece of this rock called Jamaica. Under the Land Administration Management Program LAMP DBJ agreement, about 2,000 titles will be delivered to residents across several parishes in 2015. The first batch of 650 is being issued between November and early 2015. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson has condemned recent acts of violence against health workers. It's reported that a nurse at the Mandeville Regional Hospital was assaulted by a patient and injured while on duty Tuesday. This follows a similar incident at the Maypent Hospital recently, in which doctors were threatened and abused by relatives of a patient. Dr. Ferguson says he strongly condemns these actions, especially given that health workers make tremendous sacrifices every day to care for the sick. Meanwhile, the Southern Regional Health Authority and the management of the Mandeville Regional Hospital say they have instituted measures to reduce acts of violence against health workers. Regional Director Michael Bent says after a meeting with the staff on Thursday, a decision was taken to increase security personnel at the Accident and Emergency Department. Signs are also being put up to indicate that abusive and threatening behaviour by patients will be referred to the police. Key indicators tracking Jamaica's progress towards achieving the Vision 2030 targets are showing continued progress. This was revealed in a report on the three main areas, education, security status and labor force quality. The Planning Institute of Jamaica, PIOJ, says the dashboard of indicators highlight improvements in literacy and passes in external exams for secondary students. Meanwhile, Labor force quality improved with an average of 26% of the total labor force having vocational or professional certification based on the quarterly labor force survey for July 2014. And the Category 1 crimes of murder, shooting, rape, aggravated assault and larceny declined 12.8% in the January to September 2014 period, compared to the similar period in 2013. Agriculture Minister Derek Kelly is stressing the need for farmers to have their animals' passports in their possession at all times, as government continues its national animal identification and traceability system. Tagging of cattle under that program officially started at the recent Minard Livestock and Beef Festival. Minister Kelly is warning that failure to transport cattle with a passport issued under the program will constitute a breach of the Animals, Diseases and Importation Act. Regulations to reinforce compliance are to be gazetted soon. This will therefore empower the police to prosecute any handle of livestock not in possession of the necessary passport and the code on the passport must correspond with the code on the tax. $35 million is being spent on the National Animal Identification and Traceability System. And finally, the Ministry of Labour and Social Security has begun island-wide consultations to gather information for drafting the codes of practice and regulations for persons with disabilities. This follows the passing of the Landmark Disabilities Act in Parliament. Executive Director at the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, Christine Hendricks, says the codes of practice are expected to guide interactions with and participation of persons with disabilities in society. There are practical guidelines for public authorities, employers, workers, businesses to ensure the inclusion of persons with disabilities in society. 
Ms. Hendricks was speaking at a JIS think tank on Wednesday. Consultations have so far been held in the western and eastern parts of the island. The next sets of meetings will be in Kingston and Manchester. To get more details, contact the JCPD at 926-9375 or 968-8373. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Kerry Ann Smith. Thanks for watching.